right, good morning everybody. I hope everyone is having an absolutely fantastic, fantastic day. And already right off the rip, the camera is giving us trouble. Good grief. Come on today. There we go. Okay. Sorry. My goodness. You know, guys, if this camera keeps giving me trouble, I'm just going to get rid of it. <laughs> and we're just not going to have a face cam. Because this is more aggravation and trouble than it's worth. <laughs> Believe me. But anyways, welcome everybody and happy Saturday. Currently sitting at KPVD TF Green International Airport. City in Warwick, Rhode Island is my local airport. The lovely American Eagle PSA CRJ900 sitting at the gate, waiting to get boarded. It is currently cold and dark, nothing going on. Brand new airplane, everybody. Brand new debut on this channel. We've never flown this airplane on the channel before, so hopefully we'll be able to uh, get some good flights with it today. We have three legs. We are going from Providence to Washington, Washington to Raleigh, and then Raleigh to Pittsburgh. So some really good flights scheduled for today. Who do we have in chat right now? We have King, hello, Nilsku, hello, Theme Park God, what's up my friend? Farmer, hello, as usual, thank you so much everybody for being here. I'm sure more people will pile in as the stream gets going. Burner, hello my friend, welcome. Happy, happy Saturday. What's up Michael, I'm, I'm on my phone because I were spotting at Helsinki. You're at McDonald's? Nice, man. Nice. Enjoy your McDonald's. What is your opinion on the easiest plane to land? Only airliner, so now Cessna or something like that. Um, easiest? Probably the Airbus A320neo by fly-by-wire. Easily. Um, I mean, the airplane... You know, with the fly-by-wire system, you kind of just point the nose where you want it to go and it'll stay there. So it's very manageable on approaches and very manageable on finals. Um, but yeah, I, I would give it to the A320 for sure. For sure. All right, everybody. Let's get everything up and going here. Let's jump into the flight deck. Completely cold and dark. Like I said, nothing going on in here whatsoever. Let's go up to the overhead panel where you're going to bring our battery master switch down into the on position. Viewer disagree. Viewer disagree. All right, there we go. Sounds like we have some power to the airplane now. We got to come over here to our little iPad. We got to get our ground power cart connected. Let's come back up over and turn on AC power. All right, there we go. Also, let's get our nav lights on now, and let's get our logos on, too, to let everybody know that we are under power and up and running. Sadly, can't fly with that. Isn't loading, sadly. I will test today the CRJ also. I got them all today. Nice, theme park. Nice. All right, we'll come down here now. We will get our IRSs into the, oops, into the nav position. And that'll get everything taken care of there. The next thing I want to do is come over here to our performance tab and get this all set up and ready to go so we can get the airplane all loaded and balanced. So, if we come to our SimBrief flight plan, the amount of passengers we have on board for this first leg is 75, so we'll just simply bump that up to 75. Our cargo is 4,100 pounds. So what we are going to do is we are just going to bump this up to 1,700 as high as it'll go. The maximum cargo capacity for the forward cargo compartment. And then we will put in 2,300 or 2,500 in the rear. What? Why did this not... 
Enter. Okay, yeah. You always got to remember to hit enter on that. If you don't hit enter, it is going to mess up. And then 2,500 there. Awesome. Fuel on board today that we are taking with us to block fuel for this first leg. Oh my god, that sneeze. It's 9,853. All right, awesome. Then you click set payload and simulator. Okay, now the airplane is all loaded up and ready to go on our end as far as our passengers and fuel is concerned. The Samoan, hello my friend, welcome. John Baker, hello, welcome. I'm flying in Alberta right now. It looks stunning due to snow, nice. Yeah, we're gonna be getting snow around here any day now, man. It's got down to like 41 degrees last night so it's only a matter of time before we get some snow in our area all right let's head down to the fmc let's start getting this going now we will get our fms position and enter that in we will come over here to our flight plan we are going kpvd and we are headed to kdca our alternate is What is our alternate? Pittsburgh. Ha, <laughs> funny enough, we are going there later. There we go. Our flight number, we'll just use the same flight number, of course, that we have for ourselves right now. Which is American Airlines 5634. There we go, get that entered in, we'll hit exec. And then, first more matter of business for our routing, we are heading to Jumper. J-U-M-P-R, to Jumper. I'm a few minutes AFK, then doing some nice small flights to train my landings. All right, the park sounds good, man. Good morning, mom, how are you? Thank you for being here, love you. Thank you for checking in and watching as always. Next we are headed to Rifle. From Rifle we are hopping on the J-174. From the J-174 we're going to Zizi. Z-I-Z-Z-I. -Z -Z From Zizi we are heading to ATR. And that's direct to ATR. From there, we are going direct to Laughlin. And that's it. So we can hit exec on that. We will come over here to our departure and our arrival information. We're going out on runway 23. It is a direct departure. And then we are arriving on runway 19 in DCA, and we are doing the river visual, everybody. We are doing the river visual. Um, oops, darn it. The river visual. So, we'll just take RNAV 19, the Dealey 3, with the... Laughlin transition and we will execute that in what the heck what did that do to our flight plan why'd that add all that extra crap on there um that's weird don't know what's up with that you know, it's done this to me before when I was practicing. It just it adds that white line on there, even though we have everything set up properly. I don't know. It's it's weird. Let's go through our flight plan just to make sure in our legs. Right, looking good. We have vectors there. We have a few things we need to get rid of here. We need to set that for Derek. And then if we go back, we need to get rid of that vector there as well. Exec that. You see, why is that there? That's so weird. Like, what? Why is that line just up here all of a sudden? 
Snoopy, hello. Burner says I'm going to high school's homecoming game today. Nice, man. Enjoy. Enjoy indeed. All right, our flight plan is looking good. The next thing that we want to do is head over to our performance in it page. Now from here, we're just going to come over to our little iPad here and just set copy perf in it data to FMS. Okay, that got all put in there for us. Coming back over here, well, not even so much that, going over to our flight plan, we're cruising at 36,000, really. Hmm. 36,000 feet, all right. Hit exec on that, we come over here, uh, we'll hit next. We need to get our ISA deviation entered in. There we go. Our climb wind. Where is our weather here? You know what? We're not even going to bother with that. <laughs> We're not even going to bother with that. Okay. Come over here to our VNAV setup now. Climb speed's looking good. Cruise speed is looking good. Descent speed is looking good. Okay. I think we are pretty much ready to go with this, everybody. Let me just bring this over here to progress. Now, we need to focus on getting the airplane further ready to go. As you can see, we have a bunch of cautions over here that we need to get rid of before we can continue on. Now, first order of business before any of that is going to be to start the APU. So we're going to come up here, we're going to get the APU power fuel switch activated. Come down here, make sure that we have our APU SOV open, which it is. And then we'll come up here and click on the start button. Now we'll come over here and see the APU is starting to spool up. We'll take a look outside. What's a good landing speed for an A320neo and A321neo? Um, it should tell you that right in the FMC if you have your performance calculated correctly. It should tell you that right in the approach section and the approach phase of your flight in the, in the perf tab. Mr. Nice Guy, hello. All right, our APU is fired up now. It's come up over top. APU generator. Oops. <laughs> that on to on. Looking good, we can get our air conditioners on now, get our research fan on as well. Now let's get our windshield heats on and our probe heats on. We'll come over here, we'll get our hydraulics on as well. All right, looking good. Now we will come down here and we will get our stab trims all set and our mock trim, we'll get that activated. And our yaw dampers, we will get those going as well. So coming over here now, all we have are emergency lights off. We got to get those on, which are over here. Get those set to arm. We will get our seatbelt sign down to auto. No smoking up to on. And all right, we are looking like we are pretty much good to go on the pushback here, everybody, and get the airplane started. So let's come over here to aircraft. We will disconnect the ground power unit, and we will close our door. Captain, the cabin is secure. All passengers are aboard. Thank you. Remove our wheel chocks. And ask GSX for pushback. Come up over top, we'll get our fuel pumps on now. Get the transfer flow auto override onto manual. And just wait now for the pushback tug to connect to the airplane and we'll be able to get going. Hello, Captain. We Hello. are ready for pushback. All right. 
We get our altitude all set as well. We're going up to 36,000 feet. Thirty-six thousand. There is set in. We'll come over here too. We'll go to our performance tab, and we will set our V speeds. Looking good there. V two one fifty-four. So we'll get our speed set to one fifty-four. Actually, no, we want V two plus ten. So we'll go one sixty-four. Celeste, hello, welcome. Remember, everybody, if you haven't done so already, please hit the like button on this video for me. I would really, really greatly appreciate that. Get this stream up to as many likes as we possibly can. And if you are new here, please consider becoming a subscriber. We are currently up to 660, which is absolutely beautiful. So remember, everybody, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for the channel if you haven't done so already so you never miss a stream. would really, really greatly appreciate that. And of course, as always, thank you to everybody that has subscribed so far. I really, really appreciate every single one of you. Release parking brakes. All right, we are ready to go. Releasing our parking brakes for them. Commencing push. All, All right. Clear. Start at will. All right, right engine coming on first. Come down here. We have N2 rising, N1 is rising as well. Oil pressure is starting to build. At 20% N2, we will lift this little red knob up here. Push the throttle engine, throttle lever up to idle, and then we will come over to the wing and have a listen. Gosh darn it, that thing is so sensitive. I have found. But this should start up on its own. Yep. Sounds like we have a good start of our right hand side. Let's come up over here, get our left Thank engine going. Barcroft says, hello, today I am at the desert. Nice. Very Unlocking here. Alright, sounds like we have a good start of our left hand engine as well. Let's just come over here, make sure all the start lights are extinguished, which they are. Let's come up over top. We can get our APU shut off now. We no longer need that. We can get our beacons on, we can get our nose lights on, and our taxi lights on as well. Left All right, clear. lovely. Let's get our right anti-ice on as well. We are going to need that for when we are climbing. It is very cold here today. Well, you know what? We will get that off for now. We'll wait. All right, just wait for them to pull away from the side of the airplane, and then we will be all set to go for a taxi. Let's get our flaps down <clears throat> to 8 degrees. All right. Have a good trip. Thank you. Now this is my local airport, everybody, and I know this airport like the back of my hand. And this is a payware too. 
finally we got a proper KPVD payware. I mean, it's not the best thing in the world, but it definitely looks a lot better than the default providence that comes with the sim. All right, let's release our parking brakes, everybody. And let's get moving. CRJ is just such a completely different airplane to fly, and the main reason behind that is because it doesn't have auto throttle. So it's a little bit different once you get the airplane up and going and into climb. Um, managing that throttle yourself, well, really, I mean, I guess you could say there is kind of like an auto speed kind of deal. Um, because there is, if you look at the autopilot panel, the MCP, you will see there is a speed button that we can click and what that speed button does is it basically will adjust your climb rate to match whatever speed you have set in based on what your throttle levers are positioned in so it's basically kind of like a continuous climb or a uh, I forget the name of the switch in like an, an Airbus or a um, Boeing I think it's continuous climb it, it will match whatever airspeed that you have selected in the bug to your climb rate. So this is what that does. It's the exact same thing. But once you get up to cruising altitude, you have to manage your throttle on your own to keep your airplane cruising nicely. Made it! All right, Dad. Welcome. Like I said, this is looking pretty nice for Providence. I mean, just so happy that we have a proper Providence represented here. Looks just like it. I'm very happy about that, indeed. Great first time flying the CRJ on the channel, friends. I hope you are enjoying it. I've been enjoying this airplane a whole heck of a lot ever since I started giving it a go a couple weeks ago. Here's our cargo area here at our local airport. You can see some FedEx containers over there. No airplanes, though. Oh, yeah. All right, we'll come up over top, get our landing lights on now. Get our strobes on, and we are ready to go, ladies and germs. We're going to turn and burn as well, turn right onto the runway, put ourselves up to 40% power, and then into takeoff power. Everybody, enjoy the departure. Throttles, 40%. Stable and into takeoff.
Positive rate gear up. In our left hand turn. Let's get our nav hold on, speed hold on as well, and engage the autopilot. And we can increase our speed to 250 knots. Now the airplane is going to pitch accordingly. Let's get our flats up. Lovely. And at 200, we will go flaps clean. There we go. And throttles come into climb mode. All right. Thanks, no scoot. Nicola, hello, my friend. Welcome. There's Quanta Air Base below us that we are flying over right now. Going to be home in 45 minutes, so I'll come back then on my laptop. All right, no school sounds good, man. Still doing really well on our climb rate. You've been here making a map for your TikTok? Still listening? Nice, burner, nice. This charming little airplane here taking us all the way up to 36,000 feet. That is, in my opinion, quite a high ceiling or quite a high cruising altitude for this airplane. Right. Everybody, if you haven't done so already, please remember to hit that like button for me. I would really, really greatly appreciate that. We're above 10,000 feet now. That means our landing lights and taxis will come off as we continue along with our cruise. You know, we never set we never set up a nose view for landings in this airplane. Hold on a second. There we go, this should be fine. Perfect, all right.
now serving sandwiches at 9.40 a.m. on the East Coast. <laughs> I mean, it better be breakfast sandwiches. I'll take a bacon, egg, and cheese McMuffin or something like that. I'm about to reach transition altitude here. Transition altitude is 18,000 feet. But yeah, like I mentioned, I am really enjoying this airplane so far. This airplane is absolutely fantastic. We are doing the river visual and going into Washington today. I've never flown the river visual with this airplane yet, so <laughs> this should be a little interesting. All right, there goes transition altitude. Let's get back in the flight deck here and set us to standard. Lower that down. Here we go in standard. There's Block Island right out here. Lovely little Block Island. One thing we forgot to do was we never set our climb power in of 290 above 10,000. See, that's just one of those things about this airplane that you have to remember to do. It's not like an Airbus where you have VNAV and LNAV, where, well, especially VNAV, um, where the airplane will just kind of set your power and speed for you as you go along. This right here is a little bit different. You never been to Block Island? Oh, jeez, you're not missing much. <laughs> Just a bunch of drunk people. If I'm being completely honest with you. I mean, it's it's an okay experience. It's The shops are cool, and, you know, you can get a good lunch there and everything like that. But other than that, it's really mainly, you know, it's all about Ballard's. And the whole point of going to Ballard's is, is to get drunk. So, I mean, it's an alright place to go. There she is, everybody, the CRJ-900. Canadian Regional Jets. I'm going to have visual of the area near house. Oh, yeah? What area is that? We can get some music going as well. Yeah, I figured I would bring a different airplane to everybody. You know, I mean, it was a really tough decision on what airplane to try next. You know, we had the BAE-146 available, and I don't know. I just really... I've really always wanted a proper CRJ. Ever since the FSX days, when you had the CRJ-700 as a default airplane, 
And we all know that one is kind of like, eh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, uh, obviously I, I wanted a proper CRJ, so... You couldn't beat it. You got all the CRJs for a good price, so I went for it. Long Island, fun fact, waypoint rifle is a part of the ISP SID, Long Island, nice. Ground speed, 428 knots. About 38 minutes to go. You have Vigil on the South Fork. Took me almost two hours to get there from Mid Island. 80 miles is a lot. Yeah, it is. That's the length of my entire state, about 80 miles. So earlier, I'm not sure if you guys noticed, but the stream started about five minutes late today. And uh, that was just because Streamlabs was just being so weird this morning. When I when I started it up, it uh, I had to restart the stream twice because when I started the stream, it wouldn't let me change um, the scenes that we were in. So I have one labeled before live which is just a blank black screen and then I click on starting soon which initiates the intro video the slideshow and the music and all that and for whatever reason it wouldn't let me change them and it did it twice so I had to completely restart Streamlabs twice but third time was a charm luckily We're coming up on rifle. About 296 nautical miles away from Washington. Also having to drive on a one lane road for 20 miles of it makes it worse. Yep. And let me guess the speed limit is 45. everybody hit that like button for me would really greatly appreciate that and if you are new here and you are enjoying what you're seeing please consider becoming a subscriber yeah trust me when I try when I have to drive to a couple friends houses and just like you know, because I have friends that live all over the place, and there's a few of them where we gotta get on some roads that are one lane, and in the, they're in the middle of the woods, so there's really not much out there. The speed limit on those roads is generally about 45, or sometimes less, sometimes it's 35. But you can get away with doing 50 through there pretty easily. But every now and then, 
you'll get stuck behind this car doing under the speed limit, driving through the woods. And that's really when that drive can take forever. Speed limit is 50, I think. It's Main Street for a good portion of my county, but once it merges with a highway, it becomes single lane. Really? Interesting. Oh, right. Alright, we are at rifle turning left to aesthetic. We are getting closer and closer to 750, everybody. Only 90 more to go. 90 more subscribers. Absolutely fantastic. Getting closer and closer as time goes on. At 750, I think we are going to be in the 787 for our long haul. Not sure on the routing yet. I've had quite a few requests as far as what to do for the routing. Um, like I said, not really sure what we're going to be doing. But I imagine... Uh, it is going to be something rather long, probably seven hours or so, so buckle yourselves in for a long stream on that day. That stream is probably also going to start very early. You have auto throttle at Mach 8.6 when my 747 wants to go Mach 0.9. You have a tailwind? Or a headwind. I don't use mock hold. Headwind of eight knots. <laughs> hey man, that eight knots. Your seven forty seven wants to get up and groove in, my man. The top of our descent should be in about another 100 nautical miles or so. If we boost out our range, we can see it right here. Top of descent, TOD, is at Zizzy. So we only got about 1,000 more feet to go until we are officially at our cruising altitude of 36,000 feet. There goes the altitude horn. And once we get up there... One thing you're going to notice is you're going to see this, the ALTS. This is going to start flashing like a madman about 500 feet or so before you reach your cruising altitude. And what that is telling you, when that starts flashing, that's telling you, hey, you know, you got to manage the throttles from here on out. That's what that's telling you. And I think we're going to stick with a cruising speed right at about 290. I think that'll be perfectly fine. You made damage in packages, but speed brakes are coming out. Hey, man, they're only packages, right? See, there goes that ALTS cap flashing like a madman. Like I said, that's just letting you know, hey, we are leveling off. So it's time to take control of those throttles. So the airplane doesn't accelerate anything too, too crazy. So, because that's the case, we will bring our throttles down to... This is telling us our climb N1 should be 924 but that's going to push us, in my opinion, a little bit too fast. So we will bring the throttles down just a little bit. There we go. That should do. We are leveled off now. or just about to be leveled off exactly at 360. 
so Mach 7.9 is a good cruising speed and I think we are going to be good and set at it right here with our throttles in this position. Alright, we are cruising right along now. Excellent. We have the kitty behind us. I don't know if you can see her. There she is. Really? <laughs> She's sleeping. She doesn't want anything to do with me. <laughs> She's like, leave me alone, damn it. Oh, kitty. You see, the one thing I love about the CRJ, too, is it's going to open up so many different airlines for us. Like, for instance, I want to do Air France hop eventually. I want to do some more Iberia hops in the CRJ as well. Air Canada. I mean, there's so many different areas that we can visit now. Just because we're going to have access to so many different airlines, including a lot of airlines in Africa as well, that operate CRJs, so... Really, really looking forward to trying out all those airlines now that we have a smaller regional jet that a lot of those smaller airlines operate with. And a lot of different cities as well is really what I'm looking forward to. Just keeping an eye out for the top of our descent. It's about 80 nautical miles away. Now, the one thing that this airplane will do as well, when it comes to your top of descent, you'll notice right here on your artificial horizon, you'll notice a little star pop up. And then on your vertical speed indicator here, you'll notice a little blue dot. It's either blue or green, or it might even be purple. <laughs> but it's a dot that pops up right here. And it basically is telling you what your vertical speed should be for your descent as well. This little star right here will let you know if you are too high or you're too low on your descent. So, basically, it's very manageable, but you have to manage all of it yourself with not only your throttles, but also your vertical speed mode over here and adjusting your pitch. So, I mean, it's, it's easily manageable. It's just a lot more of a hands-on approach to flying this airplane than an Airbus or a Boeing that has VNAV, where top of descent, the airplane will start descending for you. It'll manage the speed for you. It'll manage everything for you. Not this airplane. You have to do a lot of that on your own, which I actually really enjoy. I feel like when I have more of a, a hands-on need, for an airplane, I will pay more attention. <laughs> Definitely. I found myself needing to pay more attention when flying an airplane like this, for sure. Remember, everybody, you can track my flights on a Volanta as well. Don't forget about that.
Oh wow. So I hope everybody's having a fantastic start to their weekend so far. I am going to bring this up many, many times, everybody. I am starting a new job on November 7th. Um, so it's two weeks. Excuse me. About two weeks away. And um, I'm not sure if that is going to change our streaming schedule up at all. I'm going to kind of have to feel that out once I start the new job. Um, I'm not really anticipating it to change the streaming schedule around at all. Um, I do know for a fact there's no longer going to be any 12 o'clock start times on Mondays and Fridays just because I am no longer going to be working from home on Mondays and Fridays. So all the start times are probably going to be after 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern time on Mondays and Fridays moving forward. So, just a heads up on that, everybody. But streams on Mondays and Fridays will still be happening. Probably, I mean, at most, it'd probably be 5.30. We'll probably still be the same time we'll be able to get going. If not 5.30, it might be 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern. So, just wanted to let everybody know to expect a change. And I will let you guys know long before that change takes effect. But we are cruising along absolutely wonderfully here. Mach point seven nine, doing absolutely awesome. Top of descent is about forty nautical miles away. Let's start referencing our charts here. The river approach, everybody. You know, we... So, the last time I flew was in February. We actually had a stop in DCA. And uh, that's the first time I'd ever flown the river approach in an actual airplane. And uh, I wasn't expecting us to take that approach in. It, it, it was just very weird. Just the, just the turns and the left and the rights. But the one thing that was really cool, I will say, is that we flew right over the Pentagon, which was, well, not right over it, you know, we were to the left, and it, it just looks so cool being able to see the Pentagon from that altitude. I had snapped some pictures of it. I can put them in the Discord. Remember, if you are new here and you are enjoying the stream, please consider becoming a subscriber. I would really greatly appreciate that. Also, just want to make an announcement that I have started a new series of videos with a game called U-Boat. And what U-Boat is, is that it's a submarine simulator and it puts you at the helm and in command as a skipper of a German U-Boat in World War II. 
I'm going to be releasing a video on that series, probably weekly. So it's actually a very fun game I like to play. Oh, you're live? Yes. Darn it, foot. <laughs> Just joking, my dude. Just joking. Let's finish your flight. Nice. I hope it went well. Hope it went well indeed. Frankfurt to Gibraltar? Nice. I've never flown to Gibraltar myself. Twenty-three knot crosswind landing. <laughs> hey, those are the fun ones sometimes, you know. Three hour and thirty minute flight, nice. Alright, we are quickly approaching the top of our descent here ourselves. And according to our Harry, hello. According to our lovely approach here, the deal three. We're going to want to be at 11,000 feet by the time we get to billet. So, we're just going to adjust our altitude now down to 11,000. There we go. And then for the river visual, when we get to Fergie, we need to be at 3,000. So we will manage our descent very, very closely, especially in this airplane. Like I said, you got to manage your speed. You got to manage all of that on your own. No fancy technology like in an Airbus or a Boeing going to help us out here. All right, TOD is in about six miles. You boats more fun than this? We all have our opinions, man. I enjoy them both just as we could Alright, and top of descent time. Get our vertical speed on. It's recommending about 2100 feet per minute on the descent rate. Let's bring back our power levers now. See you. All right, man. Take care. Thanks for popping in.
Airplane, what are you doing? Why are you having such a hard time flying on course, bro? Ridiculous. Not like we have any winds that are pushing us off course or anything. <laughs> Pro Gamer says, do you want to get diabetes? Um, I prefer not to, no. <laughs> There, there goes the end of our contrails. JD Pillow, my friend, welcome. Thanks for checking out the stream. Hope you're having a fantastic day. following our course here. Making sure we are staying within range of our descent. Just past below 25,000. Did you play Infinite Flight? It's a very realistic game. Yeah, I've heard good things about it. I have heard good things about it. Same thing with RFS as well. But, um, yeah, when I have time, it, this is usually what I'm sticking to. It's just uh, MSFS on the PC. At 18,000 feet, everybody, back when we go through transition altitude, we will be turning the tunes off, per usual. And then we're going to get prepared for the river visual, everybody. Haven't flown the river visual yet in this airplane, so it should be rather interesting. That'll be a fun one to record. Let's just hope that FSLTL doesn't have any uh, other plans for us as far as other airplanes blocking our approach or anything like that. Am I using PC or console? This is PC. Uh, PC. <laughs> this is PC. GD PC. Jose, hello. You use a PS3 Slim? Nice, man. I do have an Xbox as well, but uh, for Flight Simulator and PC gaming, yeah, PC indeed. I, I definitely think for Microsoft Flight Simulator's sake, you know, flying it on the PC is definitely, definitely the way to go.
Alright, just keeping our speed and our descent rate managed here. We are right within the blue dot. Looks like they want us at 2,000 feet per minute. Yeah, there we go. Okay, awesome. Doing well. I play Roblox. It has a mini game such as a flight sim. Yeah, I've heard that too. I have heard that as well. And it's just crazy how many, uh, you know, how many flight simulators are really starting to get out there in the world. If you know what I mean? It's uh, flight simulation, I kind of feel like in general, has taken off a little bit. All right, music is coming down, everyone. Okay. Let's get the sim volume up here. The river visual should be interesting <laughs> in this airplane for whatever reason. I, I just I have a feeling it's either going to go really, really good or it's going to go really, really bad. This airplane can definitely get away from you if you let it. We bring our speed down and get ready for... 250 knots as well, below 10,000. I believe that uh, they want us at 280 by Dealey. Um, but obviously, when we get down to 10,000 feet at Dealey, we're going to have to keep on descending past that. Uh, down to 10,000 at Yuck. Well, because we'll be at 10,000, I guess we can stay at 280. That's what it's suggesting we do. Um, okay, so we'll keep it at 280, but we're going to have to, by the time we get to Yuck, or before we start descending for Yuck, we're going to have to slow down, for sure, to get below 250 knots at 10,000 feet. Remember, everybody, if you haven't done so already, please remember to hit that like button for me. I would really greatly appreciate that. And if you are enjoying the stream, enjoying what you are seeing, please consider becoming a subscriber and turning on the notifications for the channel as well. Join the MB crew. Become part of the fun and the shenanigans we have going on in chat. would really, really greatly appreciate that. Coming up on 11,000 feet here. Gabriel, hello. Welcome. Getting our throttles back up now to keep us at 280. Hope you are doing well, Gabriel, for sure. Good morning to you. This lovely Saturday. Right, there is 11,000. 
we're going to need to get down to 10,000 here right quick. All right, yep, there goes 10,000 now. About 300 feet per minute should do. I wish I had this flight sim. I have an old computer that works, but needs system disk Windows 7. It has the old Mario. Nice, JD. Nice. Even on an older PC, if it has Windows 7, you could probably even get Flight Simulator X up and running on it. And I believe that goes on sale all the time on Steam for like $5. So definitely keep your eyeballs peeled for that. FSX, in my opinion, is still a pretty viable sim. I flew FSX up until like a year and a half ago. Once I got this PC, I was still flying FSX. Get our landing speeds set here, just so we make sure we know what we're looking at. VREF is going to be 141. a lot of discs I had in my PS3 because in 2014 you won't stop breaking it it's three years old yeah PS3 it's really that's um like I said the PS3 really changed hey we got some traffic right here below us there he is the Southwest Airlines Very cool. Uh, yeah, the PS3, you know, that was a game-changing little system. Little console when that first came out. Seeing as we are at 10,000 feet, let's get our landing lights on now. PS3 is worth it. Everybody, if you are new here and you are enjoying what you are seeing, please consider hitting that subscribe button for me. We are chasing 750 subscribers, everybody. Once we hit 750 subscribers, we will be doing a long-haul special, probably in the Boeing 787 Dreamliner. If I had to guess, it would be the airplane that we are using. Not sure on the route yet for that one. Don't really have anything too crazy in mind. I know we've had a few suggestions for Frankfurt to JFK, but uh, we haven't really decided yet. In due time, we'll see. Your mother had an NES? Nice. Yeah, I had an original NES. I mean, that was before my time. 
uh, you know, when that first came out, but I did buy one later just for fun as like a collectible. Old TV that doesn't work become the TV, not the console. Oh, that's too bad. iPad came nice. One thing about this airplane that's tough to get used to is if you don't pay attention to it for three seconds, you will miss something. <laughs> Welcome back. Just got to transfer data to the 7th gen. All right, man. No problem. Enjoy. down to 3,000 and then it's going to be time to start the river. is Washington. Here's the river right here. really start slowing the airplane down here. Because that's one thing that I've noticed. 
is this airplane likes to move quick. And if you aren't careful, you'll get yourself in a hairy situation with it. Back, by the way, which iPhone do you use? Uh, the 13, I think? Yeah, right? Yeah, 13. everybody the start of the river nice my father had iPhone 4 when I was little he became drunk and lost it There's the river. Okay. I think that we can get ready to take over here, let our autopilot make this next turn for us, and start descending some more. Alright, everybody. Let's take control for the river visual. Get some flaps in. There's our runway right there in front of us. <laughs> All right, get our gear down. No, we never started recording. Oops.
boy. <laughs> 100. We are really low, but we saved it. 50. 40. 30. 20. 10. Easy does it, Captain. <laughs> And we forgot to arm our reversers. Whoops. Wowie. All right, reversers, you can come off now. Thank you. Holy guacamole. <laughs> Well, the river went fine up until we forgot to hit record. And then it became a little bit, uh... A little bit interesting, but... We got very slow. But we made it. And minus 118. That replay is going to be interesting. We got way too low. <laughs> All right. Flaps coming up. This is coming off. Shrobes can come off as well. Get our APU started. All right, a little scary, but we made it nonetheless. We're going to take this jetway right here with the fire truck right next to it. Not like we need the fire truck, but you know. Oh wow, okay. That's interesting. Based on the angle of that jetway, I didn't think the parking spot was right here. <laughs> You missed the landing? It was a little scary, not gonna lie, Casso, not going out to lie. We got a little bit too low. I forgot to hit record on the replay. <laughs> so that made it a little bit interesting, but uh, oops, never put in our speed break. But we made it nonetheless. All right, let's get everything configured again for Arrival here. Okay. Let's get this view for the first angle of the replay. You've been in a CRJ? They're really neat. Yeah, man. 
I've never been in one, but I've seen them. But here's where we started the recording, and, you know, we forgot to, uh... <laughs> See, we were doing well right here, and then we got way too low. But we did the river visual, everybody. Kind of uncomfortable because the panel in the middle, yeah, it's a little bit to get used to. Seats were comfortable. My goodness. <laughs> FSLTL putting airplanes in the middle of the runway. Alright, well, let's back her up a little bit and get a view from the other side. There's the Pentagon. Why is the don't sink alarm on? <laughs> 30, don't sink. 20. FSLTL, man. Right here is where we got a little bit low. <laughs> but uh, we, we saved it. That was a hard one. <laughs> Alright, let's uh, get this ahead here. Get back to the gate. Like so. And, uh... Oops. Get our parking brake set still. And uh, our APU is running, right? Okay, brake temp. Brake overheat. Oh boy. Get these off now. Get those off. APU is running. Let's... Cut her down. 
Maybe? No? and no jetway. The cool thing about the CRJ is that since me and my family were sitting in the back, you kind of had to raid your voice a lot. You hear at normal volume, the vibration from the engines made your voice wavy. Oh, I can only imagine. I've never been in a uh, rear engine or a mid-engine airplane, so I really, I couldn't tell you, but you guys know the drill. We are going to get everything reset here, and we are going to continue on to Raleigh, everybody. Raleigh, North Carolina is the next stop. So bear with me about five minutes while I get everything reset. We're going to continue on in the CRJ. Thank you to everybody who stuck with us for that first river visual. Really appreciate every single one of you. Give me about five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Get a drink, get a snack, do whatever it is you need to do. Use the restroom, and I'll be right back.
All right, sorry about that, guys. We had a crash to desktop literally right after we, we loaded in. Um, after restarting the sim, of course, so we had to restart the sim again. Uh, but we are back. Uh, let me just get Fly Live Studios up and running. Of course, when the simulator disconnects, kind of all your add-ons that go along with it disconnect. So bear with me a second. I gotta get Fly Life back up and running with our information here. Okay, there it is. And for whatever reason, it's picking us up as being in a CRJ 800, which I don't understand, but uh, is what it is. We were, what, 5634, I believe. Okay, there we go. Fly Live is back up and running. Awesome. Volanta. Looks like Volanta. Volanta's behaving. So that's cool. Volanta's up and running. Excellent. FS Realistic. Get that going as well. Should hear the FS Realistic Connected message any second. Any second now. FS Realistic connected. There it is. All right. And then the FS LDL traffic injector injection started. Lovely. Okay. Awesome. The airplane is in a turnaround state, everybody. So everything is up and running from when we just left it. So let's get back inside here. Yep, you can hear everything is up and running. So we are going to start right away with uh, getting everything going for us. The APU is currently off. So the first thing we need to do is come down here to our performance tab of the little iPad over here and get all of our flight information entered in for weight and balance. So. On this leg, we are taking 85 passengers, so nearly full. Nearly full, but not quite. Cargo, we're taking 4,700, so this is going to go to the maximum here. 1,700 pounds. We'll hit enter on that. Aft cargo, of course, to get to 4,700 pounds, we need to put 3,000 pounds in here. All right, and then our fuel, we are taking 9,039 pounds. Oops. 9,039, hit enter on that, and then hit set payload and simulator. There we go, that is good. We have all of that taken care of. Let's head down to the FMC and start getting all of this taken care of position in it again and get that good to go flight plan of course we are going kdca for ronald reagan international airport and we are heading to krdu raleigh durham international airport in raleigh north carolina enter that in our alternate airport is really wow okay Well, I mean, that's not really that surprising. But, uh, all right, that's good to go. Our flight number again, AA5634, American Airlines 5634 for the flight number. And we will hit exec on that. From here, we are going direct to Melton after our departure. Direct to Melton. And then from there, we are going right on to the arrival. Okay, so not really much going on here. That's the only waypoint we need to enter in. Let's come over here to our departure. We're going out on runway 19 using the J-Dub-4. There it is, and the Melton transition, which we already had entered in. There we go. The Melton transition, we will hit exec on that. And then we're going to come back over here to our departure and arrival index. We'll go to arrivals. We're going in on 2-3 left. We'll take the ILS. And then we are going in on the Alden 3 transition via the Melton 
as well. For the Alden 3 star and the melting transition, we will execute that in. Okay, also, let's come over here to our legs and just check through these here and get rid of any discontinuities, which there is one right here. Get that filled in and then replace the vector with Docat and we should be good from there. Lovely. Exact that. And let's go over to our performance in it. We'll come back over here to the little iPad that we have here and copy perf in it data to FMS. There we go. That should be all copied over now. And we just need our cruising altitude of 28,000 feet. 28,000 feet. Looking good there. Also, we'll hit exec on that. VNAV setup. Let's just make sure this is looking good. That's good. That's good. And that is good. Awesome. Performance initiation is all set and ready to go. And I believe that we are all done with the FMC in general. Let's pop up here to the overhead. Let's get our APU door open. Make sure that it's open. It is indeed. Now we will hit the start button. Get the APU up and running. We will get our um, seatbelt signs on now. Get our seatbelts down to auto. No smoking goes up to on. Alright, we just gotta wait for the APU to fire up before we continue. You can see down here it's still going. Remember everybody, if you haven't done so already, remember to smash that thumbs up button for me. would really greatly appreciate that. I hate to use that, uh, and I didn't even really mean to use <laughs> that super cliche live streamer, YouTuber term of smash the like button, but uh, it slipped, so... My apologies, everybody. But yes, remember to hit that like button for me. Would really greatly appreciate that. And if you are new here and you are enjoying what you're seeing, enjoying the vibe, enjoying me, please go ahead and consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications so you'll be notified whenever I go live. Would really, really, greatly, greatly appreciate that. Okay, let's head back up to the overhead panel now. Uh, we don't need our AC power anymore. We'll get our circulating fan. That's already on. We will get our air conditioning on now. We will get our hydraulic pumps on also. Same thing with our windshield heat and probes. That's looking good. Okay. Let's come down here. Oops, that's not what we wanted. Let's come down here. And let's get our stab trims and mop trim all set. Let's get our yaw damper all set as well. Okay, we should be pretty much good to go. Just check here. We don't have anything else. That's looking abnormal. So lovely. I think we are going to be ready for pushback. So let's come up here. Let's tell GSX to prepare for pushback and departure. We will come over to our little iPad here, go over to aircraft. We will disconnect the GPU. And we will close our door and disconnect Hello, the wheel chocks. We are ready for pushback. We will get up over top. We will get our fuel pumps on and our auto override switch into manual for the X flow. Looking good there. All right. Getting ready for push. We will watch them do their thing over here. Departure checks completed. Bypass pin inserted. <laughs> She's just like standing inside. <laughs> oh, passes right through too, my goodness. Ah, uh, jeez. This is something else, don't you think? Locking gear. Pig Pitness, what's up, my friend? Gotta love GSIX. Yep. <laughs> uh. Ooh, ooh, wow, we never... We never figured out where we needed to go here. Durr. Uh, we are going out on runway... What did we say? 19? I believe 19 was the departure runway. Yep, 19. Okay. We need to push back out and to our left. Okay. 
Release parking brakes. Release parking brakes. You haven't even. Oh, now the jetway's gone. I'll say you haven't even released the jetway yet. Use the parking brake. Commencing All push. Clear. Start at will. Right engine coming up first. We will come down over here. We have N2 rotation and one rotation as well. Oil pressure starting to build up. Lovely at 20% N2. We will lift this little red knob up here and move the fuel flow up into idle. Set our parking brake. Looks like engine number two was started nicely. Get our left hand engine started. And two rotation and one rotation. Oil pressure. Starting to build. Same procedure, 20% N2. Come over here, lift up the little red knob, and get to fuel flow going to the engine. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass pin removed. Left is clear. Right is clear. All right. It sounds like we have a good start of the left engine, which we do. We'll just come over here and make sure the auto ignition and starts come off, which they just did. Lovely. We will come up to the overhead pan now. Let's get our beacon lights on, taxi recognition lights on, nose lights on. Okay, let's get our APU off. No longer need that. And uh, yeah, we are good to go. Other than getting our slats and flaps down to 8 degrees. the slats there go the flaps okay eight degrees lovely we will come over here as well let's go to our performance tab let's set our speeds here there we go looking good let's get our altitude all set 28,000 feet not 40,000 28,000 Chasing 28,000, there we go. And then our speed, we want to set to V2 plus 10, which is going to be 166. All right, we are ready to go, ladies and gentlemen. Let's release, oops, uh, no, not that. Let's release our parking brake and let's get moving. what is going on here that guy's just doing circles we're just gonna cut him off <laughs> FSLTL wasn't perfect either obviously we are going to turn left on to Juliet here and then follow it all the way down to runway 19 
wow, okay, we, uh, that's not what we wanted to do. I misread that taxi chart. Whoops. I thought we had one more taxiway to cross. But we crossed Juliet <laughs> without even realizing it, so no big deal. We're just gonna have to crunch into that United. FSLTL is having an absolute stroke, so let's come up here and let's reset the traffic injection and remove nearby traffic so that will reset so we don't have all those airplanes doing circles. Okay, now we're heading in the right direction. <laughs> we have a takeoff config OK notification here. APU door is open, we gotta get that closed. Go. Awesome. We are good to go. Washington Monument out there. Runway 15. will be just up here on our right. on now. Strobes will come on as well. All right, we are good to go, ladies and germs. Let's get on out of here. Let's go to Raleigh. The lever's coming up 40%. Enjoy departure, everyone. Okay, and into takeoff power. Gear up. One of our engines wasn't in takeoff power there. All right. Let's enter, get nav and speed going here. And once we hit 1500 feet, autopilot will go on. Fifteen hundred autopilot engage. All 
right thrust reduction. Down to climb power. Okay, awesome. And let's get our speed up to 250 knots. Flats coming or flaps coming up. And slats coming clean. Alright, lovely. What an excellent departure, everybody. On our way to Raleigh for leg number two. Awesome, awesome departure. Okay, awesome. Above 10,000 now, landing lights coming off. Climb speed, gonna get initiated, 290. Everybody, if you haven't done so already, hit that like button for me. Would really, really, really appreciate it. Get the stream up to as many likes as we possibly can. Get our range zoomed out here a little bit. About 30 minutes to go already. Only about 196 nautical miles. Not a very long leg for this one. Nice and short. Sandwiches, all right.
And let's get our tunes back up and going, shall we? Nugget, hello, welcome to the stream. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Only about 26 more minutes to go on this one. We should be there off clearly before noon Eastern time. Oh yeah, we got to get ourselves into standard pressure here. Two niner niner two going up to 28,000. Yep. 28,000 feet. We should be at cruising altitude in no time. Cool looking bird. Long snout. Oh yeah. The CRJ 900. Longer than the 700, but yet shorter than the CRJ 1000. Like I said, I've always loved the CRJs, and, uh, you know, that's kind of why I went with this airplane, to, to choose for a new bird to fly, because, you know, we had a couple of different choices. We could have used the BAE-146, but I kind of decided against the BAE. Oliver, hello. I said, hello, I just went to the airport to spot some airplanes. Nice, Oliver. What'd you end up seeing? Anything cool? Anything rare or, or unusual? Everybody, if you haven't done so already, hit that like button for me. Would really, really, greatly appreciate that. And if you are new here and you are enjoying the stream, please consider becoming a subscriber and turning on notifications for the channel as well, so you will never miss a live stream or whenever I post a video in my U-boat series or a flight simulator video in general. You saw Ryanair and Jet Time and another weird one. Nice. Have I ever flown the MD-80 for a Microsoft Flight Simulator? Absolutely. We've done many a streams with the MD-80. We call that Mad Dog Mondays. But uh, I gotta fix my MD-80 because we keep having engine failures on our finals. Every time we approach final and we're about 800 feet AGL, 
the right hand engine shuts down every single time and I have no idea why. So I haven't done this yet but I need to completely uninstall and then reinstall the MD80 and see if we can't replicate that problem. Like I said, I have no idea what could be causing it. People are saying it could possibly be the honeycomb throttle quadrant, but I just, I don't really see that, man. I don't really see that being the reason. Just approaching cruising altitude here. Remember, this airplane does not have auto throttle, so we got to manage our N1 percentage on our engines ourselves. Our cruising speed for this flight is 300 knots, so get that selected to 300. And we can start bringing the power down now as well. To about 88.6% and one is what we want for our cruise. Probably less than that because we are still accelerating. Holy moly. Yep, there goes the overspeed alarm. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm not listening to that again. That recommended 88.7% and one for cruise power and that put us into overspeed, so not doing that. <laughs> So we're going to be getting close to top of descent here anyway, coming up shortly in about 50 nautical miles right at Melton right there. Remember, after Raleigh, we are going to Pittsburgh, everybody. Pittsburgh after this. We're going to go visit the Steelers and uh, wish them luck <laughs> for the football games this weekend. Coming up on top of descent rather shortly here. Let's start referencing our charts. Dawn, we need to be below 1700 feet. By the time we get to Favco, we need to be below 12,000. So I think what we are going to do is we are going to set our altitude already down to 12,000 feet and then follow what the airplane suggests we do. Getting a little bit of turbulence there. Let's 
some vibrations. Nothing abnormal. Well, again, thank you so much for everybody who's coming and hanging out with me today. Really appreciate all of you. Okay, here comes a top of descent here in about 11 nautical miles. Like I said, that's what just makes this airplane so unique is the lack of the lack of auto throttle. I mean, to me, that really just makes the airplane more challenging to fly in general and, and kind of not so much more enjoyable, but it gives you a higher workload. And that's kind of what I think I really enjoy about this. You know, like when I re when it was revealed that I was going to be using the CRJ as the next airplane, people were like, oh, the CRJ sucks. It's a terrible plane for the simulator. And I'm like, what? It's rated as like one of the best. <laughs> It's right up there with the PMDG, in my opinion. I ha I've had no problems with it. It's just a different airplane, man. If you're used to flying an Airbus or a Boeing that does a lot of the descent for you and, and does a lot of all that stuff for you, then you're going to have a hard time with it. I mean, literally, the airplane tells you what to do. If you program your performance right and get your FMC all programmed correctly, it'll give you your top of descent. And once you reach your top of descent, it'll even tell you what vertical speed you need to be descending at. Alright, so we are going to start lowering our power here because we want a cruise or a descent speed of 290. So let's set this to 290. And then get our vertical speed on. As it's going to be giving us our vertical speed angle here any second. at our descent speed and there goes the vertical speed angle so it wants us going down at about 2100 feet per minute initially so let's get that down nice and gentle here we don't want to give anybody a rough ride Okay, we have started our descent. Bring back the power levers just a little bit more. Make sure that we aren't going to speed up to keep our speed right at 290, which we are managing rather well. 
I mean, I'd say that the hardest thing to get used to with this airplane is getting used to managing the throttle levers because you'll find yourself over here, I mean, if you look at your engine instruments, you'll find yourself continuously chasing a specific percentage of N1 power, um, you know, and, and that takes a little bit of getting used to. Uh, as you can see, we are already going a little bit faster than we need to on descent, so what we need to do is just bring back the power levers just a little bit. Like that, about 3%. And you can see, if we look here at our speed tape, you can already see that pink line going below our arrow. That means we are slowing down. So it doesn't take much to get the airplane to slow down. We'll lower the power levers just a little bit more to about 66%, 67% and one, and the airplane will start gradually slowing down for us. Our descent rate is right on the money at about 2,400 feet per minute. We gotta be below 17,000 feet by the time we get to McDon here. The next thing we are going to want to do is we're gonna wanna come over here to our radio here and we are going to want to make sure that we have our ILS information plugged in here. Uh, we didn't use the ILS on the first one. We did the river visual RNAV approach going into Washington. So we didn't do this step on the first one. So we're doing 108.5 here for our nav radio for the first one. And then we're going to enter that in for the second one as well. And there we go. Excellent. Come down here and just make sure that is activated, which it is. Awesome. So that's all set up and good to go. Bring us back over here to our prog page. Descent speed, still a 290, still looking good. All right. Doing well, about 70 nautical miles away. And as you can see, we are already starting to accelerate again, so now we really got to bring the power levers down. Because we are going a little bit fast. I want to play this game so much, but it's not available in my country, really? How come? What's the, what's the reasoning? I've never heard of that before. But uh, I, ju I just might not be aware of why. Alright, we gotta get ourselves out of standard mode for our barometric pressure and just make sure that we have it set to 992. Looking good. Keeping our speed managed here. And make sure that we are following the suggested rate of descent as well. By all dawn here, we need to be below 12,000, and we already need to be at 250 knots by Alden. So we're going to lower our power levers all the way to idle, 
and we are going to set 250 on our speed bug. At that point, that's just a reference of what speed you should be at. That's all that really is. And we need to be below 12,000, so we'll just set ourselves at 11,000 here. And we will open up some speed brake as well to help slow us down. Opening them up a quarter of the way to get our speed below 250 knots. This is also the last song, everybody. We're going to lower it down right now. All right. get the simulator volume back up here let's get back into our flight deck our speed is doing rather nicely get our speed brake out now we no longer need that Looks like we're going to be going below 12,000 feet at just the right moment here. Couldn't ask for anything more perfect than that, now can we? Now we need to be below 9,000 coming up here. Once we get to Gazer. So we'll just set it to 8,000. Bring our power levers back up a little bit to keep us at 250. said this airplane there's a lot to manage and there's a lot to do when you're descending like this and a lot to pay attention to just about to go below 10,000 feet let's get our landing lights on we're already below 250 knots you know like I mentioned there's a there's a lot to pay attention to with this airplane and, and if you don't pay attention and you, you could miss a pretty crucial step I mean I, I've already done it a few times here well even on the stream I did it once this airplane will get away from you fast on the approach as well. <clears throat> Everything moves so quickly. You know, getting this airplane slowed down is really, I would say, is the, the biggest challenge for myself personally. Is getting this airplane to slow down, especially when you're starting to come time to get towards final. Looks like we need to be at 210 knots by the time we get to Harsh. And below 9,000 feet, but above 8,000. I'm guessing this is a new plane. Yes, it is, Barry. It is indeed. to be at 6,000 feet by the time we get to our next waypoint. So let's get our vertical speed back in play here. We want to get down at about 1,100 feet per minute, give or take, maybe about 1,500 feet per minute. Power levers are at idle. We need to be at 210, so we're going to open up our speed brake just a hair. 
to help get us slowed as well. Throttle? No, sir. <laughs> we were just talking about that, how really um, managing your speed in this airplane is really the most important thing and really can uh, be quite tricky to get used to. If you are used to flying something like a Boeing or an Airbus that manages all of your speed for you, this can be, this can be a little bit tricky to get used to, but I said you just got to really pay attention like for instance we're starting to level off now so which means we got to bring some power up other than that I, I've had nothing but a good time flying this airplane so far all right we got to get down to 3,000 feet now down to about 900 feet per minute on the descent rate. Yeah, just like the BAE, you really got to watch your speed. Yeah, and, and that's exactly what this airplane is really about. Um, you know, I've done it a few times already, um, flying this airplane, and I did it already on stream. I wasn't paying attention for a split second. Wasn't paying attention to a split second, and we let ourselves get a little bit too low, and... Too slow, well, too low and too slow, and that was really what kind of, uh, we were doing the, the river visual into Washington on our first leg, and we saved it, and we ended up making a beautiful landing about minus 110. That's probably why I didn't like it. Yeah, it really, it, it's one of those airplanes that takes a lot of patience to get used to. But once you get used to it, I mean, like I said, I have no problem with it. But once I first announced that this was the airplane that we were going to be using here today, I had several people reach out to me. Not several people, but a few people, even in uh, the Discord, saying, oh, the, the CRJ sucks. <laughs> and it's like, um, you know, is it that the CRJ sucks or is it that you don't know how to fly it? You know, I'm going to go with it's probably the latter of the two when most people say something like that, that a certain airplane sucks. You know, when I hear nothing but good things about the airplane from other people that know how to fly it and review it, you know? Facts? Yeah, Castle knows. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know, and, and, and that's no problem if you don't know how to fly the airplane. Just look up tutorials, man. Like, I learned how to fly this airplane within a matter of days. Just look up some tutorials, and then you'll be good. And other than that, like I said, the hardest thing that you're going to have a hard time getting used to is just the fact that there's no auto throttle. But that's what happens. You get spoiled by Airbus and Boeing, right? <laughs> For having the auto throttle. All right, we're going to get approach mode on here. Hey, hello. Have I ever flown an A380? Not in this simulator, my friend. Uh, in past simulators, yes. I did fall for getting the Abacus A380, which if anyone's ever seen the Abacus A380 or any of the Abacus flight simulator products, then, uh, you know, slats coming out. our speed brake or spoilers uh, those are in auto get our reversers armed all 
All right, there's the localizer. And there's our runway out there. Keep our speed well managed here. Oh, what the heck was that? Something just like flashed in front of the screen. Get our V-Ref set. 143 on V-Ref. So we're going to get some more flap out. A380 long haul when we reach 700 subs is when, when the A380 comes out. You know, we will definitely be doing more flights in it, but the A380 is not out yet, friends. That's what we're waiting on. All right, perfect. The airplane is flying the approach perfectly for us so far. Runway is right out in front of us there. Let's get the replay tool going. All right, recording. Oh boy, all right. See, there we go. We weren't paying attention. Two seconds and our speed kind of got away from us there. Get some more flap out. Airplane, what are you doing? All right, we're just taking over from here. Gear coming down. See, and that right there is what can make this airplane a little bit hard to manage. See, you look away for two seconds and your speed gets away from you. making us have to put a harsh descent rate in here. Then the airplane started climbing there, which was pretty weird. We got it from here now, though. Camera does a 180 for a split second. Yeah, we, we've had several problems over the past couple of days with the simulator, if I'm being completely honest with you. All right, everybody, enjoy the arrival. Landing rate monitor. Landing, sir. Darn. Well, no landing rate monitor, but that's no big deal. We can have a look at Volanza. One thing I've noticed is this airplane takes forever and a day to slow down once we touched. All the way to the end. <laughs>
Welcome to Raleigh, everybody. Alright, excellent flaps coming all the way up. Spoilers, retract. Landing lights off, taxis will stay on, strobes will stay off, APU, get it fired up. And let's select a parking spot. Gate 3. Airlines, all right, gate three is where we are headed. Let's look at our chart here and find gate three for our parking positions. Hmm. I assume it means gate C3. Hold on, let me look at this again. Change parking facility, currently gate three. Looks like we're going to have to uh, find where that is and just keep an eye out. For our ground crew workers. Get our reversers unarmed. Ground nose wheel steering, we'll get that armed. Terminal 1 right here. I'm thinking it is. Yeah, it is. We are going to have to pass Terminal 1 because I'm thinking that this is not where we're going to be meant to go. Unless that's our spot right there. Actually, I think it is. Yeah, I think that is our spot. Cool. Okay, never mind. And according to our parking positions, is that going to be gate three? Yeah, it is. Wow, okay. This thing was actually right for once. <laughs> Crazy. All right, what a beautiful arrival in the CRJ. Raleigh Durham, everybody. Raleigh Durham. Alpha, hello. He says, where can I get GSX for Microsoft Flight Simulator? Um, probably, I think I got mine from the FS Dream Team website. I believe is where I retrieved mine from. Look at the jetway. This dude's standing inside of it. Or uh, go on Google and just do a quick GSX Google search, and that should bring you to their website. I have a feeling this person's uh, this parking or our marshaller is going to be upset with us because it's telling us that we are 19 feet off and we need to be 19 feet to the left. They're going to tell us we're off on the parking job, but that's because of the way that this is set up. See, it looks like it's a little messed up because they want us to... So we're not even facing her. Seeming as she's currently inside. She's like, let her go. Okay. 
Let's set our parking brake. <laughs> She's going nuts. Let's get our uh, flaps back down and get our landing lights back on and our strobes back on. We need to get our reversers armed again so that they will work for us when we start the replay. Enjoy this first replay view, everybody. I wonder if the uh, landing rate monitor will work this time around. Still nice, oh yeah. Two hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Minus ninety eight popped up now. Get a, another view. Don't sink. Don't sink. Let's get this view now. Don't sink. Always get the don't sink alarm from here. Weird. Don't sink. Don't sink. Two hundred. Don't sink. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Don't sink. Twenty. View from the outside. We'll get them here. Go. Beautiful, beautiful, minus 98. Like I said, I'm really enjoying this airplane so far, man. Really fun to fly. Butters easily. It butters easily, giving you treat it nicely.
And not only that, but the damn near perfect parking job on top of this. <laughs> Alright, let's get back inside here. Uh, let's... Parking brake is still set for us. Let's get rid of this. APU is running, which means we can shut her down. Alright, beautiful everybody, you know the drill, we are going to get everything reset here, oops, get these off. We are going to get everything reset here and do our final leg that it's going to take us from Raleigh to Pittsburgh everybody, so give me just a few minutes while we get everything reset back up, last leg everybody, last leg indeed, give me just a few moments and thank you very much.
All right, everybody, we are back. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Final leg of the day, everybody, in the Aerosoft CRJ900 burner. Welcome back, my friend. He said, I had very, very bad PC troubles, and I had to get a haircut. Yeah, you know, my PC's been acting funny over the past couple of days, too, you know. Um, it seems like Windows has released a couple of updates in the past few days, and ever since then, my PC just seems like it's not really running the best. Um, and they've updated, like, they've put three updates out this week alone, at least for me. But I've had other people say that they have Windows 11 too, and they haven't had any updates. So, I have no idea what the bleep is going on with that, but no big deal. Last leg is taking us to Pittsburgh, everybody. You can see there our flight data is already all reset. The airplane is currently in a turnaround state. So, let's get inside here and let's get everything going and ready for us so we can leave. First thing to do is we're going to come down here to our iPad and we're going to get our weights and our balance all set. Just like x 12, Windows 11 is still not ready. I know, right? I tried to close Chrome for 30 minutes. That's how bad it was? Yeah, dude, I... I Trust me, I've been having a couple of rough days with mine as well, man. It, can, it was being kind of an a-hole. <laughs> Alright, 87 passengers. Darn near full. Only three empty seats on this one. There we go, 87. Hit enter on that. Our cargo we're bringing today total is 4,800 pounds. So that means that we are full up in the front cargo compartment. 1,700. And in the rear... We need to load in 3,400. Wait. 2,400. <laughs> Enter that in, and the total fuel that we are bringing with us on this final leg today is going to be 9,726. Enter that in. Oops. Enter that in, awesome, and then hit set payload in simulator. There we go, we are all loaded up. Wonderful. I wish x would still work nowadays, or I would totally downgrade. <laughs> oh, oh, Windows XP. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> For me, I'm a Windows 2000 guy myself. There was just something about Windows 2000 and, like, Windows 98. Especially in the, the Flight Simulator 98 commercials. Man. You know, I was born... Like, I was born in the 90s you know I was born in the mid 90s though so 1995 you know what I mean so Windows me oh yeah that would be useless operating system <laughs> geek welcome my friend you had it yeah Windows Millennium oh no was it was Edme stood for Millennium or was Windows Millennium something different or yeah, ME was Millennium Edition, right? Or Millennium Edition? Wasn't that the, what that stood for? Oh, God. Get our flight number all entered in here. We'll hit exec on that. Lovely. Our alternate airport is Millennium Edition. Yeah. <laughs> Not that it was a useless operating system. It just... Right, and our alternate is Detroit. Let's hope we don't have to go there. <laughs> right, hitting Zach on that. Uh, we are going direct to Deborah.
Not in database. Okay. Oh, it's because I put a D in there. Okay, legit spelled Deborah. There we go, that's good. From Deborah, we're going direct to Ricks, R I C C S. From Ricks, we are going direct to I H D. It sucked. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Execute that in. We go to our departure and our arrivals. We are departing runway 5 left, and we are going out via the Elwood. The Elwood 5. We only have the Elwood 4 here. But uh, that should do just fine the same. And there's the Deborah transition. Execute that in and go back to our arrival. We are going in on runway 32 in Pittsburgh. We'll take the ILS and we will go in on the Demi 4 via the IHD transition. All right, lovely. Hit execute on that as well. Okay. Hmm. Why does that keep disappearing? Oh, is it because we have vectors, don't we? Yep. <laughs> Just getting used to this airplane, man, with all of its weirdness. Let me go get that in, and then get rid of that vector. Now we can execute. There we go. Let's keep going here. We are going to go to Weiler after that, and then put Weiler in place of our vector as well. Exec. Okay, and that should be good. Lovely. Let's head on over to our performance data. We can go back to our iPad here and copy perf init data to FMS and that'll give us all of our information that we need copied over automatically. We are cruising at flight level 350 for this leg. There we go. Exec that in. VNAV is looking good. All right. Lovely. We are good to go here with the FMC. Other than coming over here, actually, you know, we gotta go back to our little iPad. We gotta set all of our reference speed there. We want our speed to be set to V2 plus 10, which is gonna be 164. And we are going up to 350 on the altitude. Get that all set up. 350, awesome. We're going to come down here, we are going to get our stab trims on, and our mock trims activated. And then same thing with our yaw dampers. Yaw dampers are all set now, let's head on up to the overhead, we got to get our hydraulic switches into the on position. Same thing with our windshield heats and our probes, that should be all set and ready to go as well. Everybody and their mother crossing the Atlantic in Valanta, <laughs> is there an event going on? Our APU is already running. We're sitting here on uh, APU power. Get our emergency lights on. No smoking sign comes on. Seatbelts go down to auto. Let's come down here as well. Let's go over to aircraft. Let's get our GPU car disconnected. Let's get our passenger door closed. And let's get our... Ooh, never mind. It was already closed. And let's get our wheel chocks removed, which Passing they are. Secure, all, all right. Let's go up to GSX. Let's remove the jetway. And then let's prepare for a pushback and departure. We'll come up over top as well. We will get our fuel pumps on and our override switch on as well. APU is running nicely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Just wait for pushback where we get our engine started and officially be on our way. Get our fan on here. We don't even have our... Yeah, our ACs are on. Okay. Hello, Captain. We're ready for pushback. Hello, where are you? There you are. Hurry along now. 15 conga lines. <laughs> Check completed. Bypass pin inserted. 
We're ready for the bypass pit. No, they need to work on the animations a little bit more, in my opinion. I mean, I know it would be difficult just because there's so many airplanes available for the simulator. But maybe work on the animations just a little bit more so it doesn't look as ridiculous with him going inside the airplane. Dude's got a massive bald spot, too. <laughs> you see that? Oh, it went away now. Oh, there it is. His bald spot is back. Oh, it's gone now. All right, we are going out on runway, like we said, runway five left. And according to our chart here, if we're going to be departing runway five left, we need to push back out and to our right. Release parking brakes. All right. Releasing our parking brakes. Commencing We're going to be good to go. Starting clear. Start our right building. engine first. All right, starter engaged. N2 rotation. N1 rotation. Oil pressure. Starting to rise. Okay, 20% N2. We will lift this little red switch here and bring our throttle lever into idle. She's coming to life. Is it that same event in Pittsburgh tonight? Nice. Oil pressure still building nicely. Oil temp is looking good. We have good fuel flow. Nothing going on with our engine here. Wait for our right auto ignition and right engine start to distinguish there. Or extinguish. And then we will start the left hand side. All right, there that both goes. Left hand side coming up. And two percentage rising, and one rising as well. Oil pressure. Climbing. Lovely. Same thing. Twenty percent. Lift this little red knob and bring the throttle lever into idle. Twenty. Idle. Fuel flow for 40, and on she comes. Get our beacon lights on now. An A321, very nice. Or is that an A320? Oh, that's an A321, right? Hard to tell. Or it might be an A320, I don't know. I think you've pushed us back far enough there, Chief. All right, let's get our APU set parking off brakes. now. Let's we'll set our parking brake. We have good engine Contact start. Ground. We have a good engine start. You can disconnect. APU winding down. Lovely. We'll get our nose lights on and our taxi lights on as well. Flaps going to come to 8 degrees. And there we go, 8 degrees on our flaps. Lovely. Let's move over here to our performance. Let's set our V speeds again just to make sure we did. Okay, and then we just gotta wait for these guys to Unlocking get out of the gear. way so we can get out of here. Let's look up the RDU METAR very quickly. Disconnect. Bypass been removed. Left is clear. Three zero two five. Okay. Come on, Mr. Baldspot. Hurry up. Dude, 
Like, this is one thing about GSX I wish they would fix, is this right here. How long this takes. See, he stands there, shows us the bypass pin, puts his arm down, stands there for another five seconds, then says bye, puts his arm down, stands there for another five seconds, and then walks away. My goodness. Have I used the sync feature? Yep. It's activated right down here. Engine sync. N1, always. I haven't used the high power schedule though yet. No, I haven't. I have not. All right, we are good to go. Let's release our parking brake. And let's get moving. Takeoff configuration showing as okay. APU still open, we'll close that. All right, lovely. We're gonna follow Alpha all the way down, take a right onto Echo up here, and the five left will be right in front of us. Realistic wasn't connected. Darn you, FS Realistic. How it works on the BAE, the binding is toggled, afterburner, and then you press it, basically pauses the autopilot, letting you manually control the plane, and pressing it again will re-engage. Ah, interesting. Yeah, no, I, I have yet to use it. The autopilot modes will stay set. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't really found myself uh, being in the situation as to where I've had to use that yet? I mean, I guess we could do it on departure when we turn our nav and speed mode on. But uh, the way I've been doing it is I've just been, oh my goodness, <laughs> this airport has a problem. Get ready everybody, four wheel drive coming in, we got the off-road suspension package. Some more bumpy, bumpy taxiways coming up here. You know, thank God we're not going the opposite way. Southwest plane coming right for us. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, FSLTL, get out of here. See ya. Ladies and gentlemen, the captain has advised that we are now pleased to take off. 
<laughs> All right, here's our departure runway right here. We are going to line up and wait. <clears throat> I like to use it, the plane that's been off the localizer, just to get it back where I want it and not mess up the approach mode. Oh, all right, I got gotcha. you. Looks okay, I don't see any problems with it. Taxiway is normal, that you need a 4x4. Yeah. All wheel drive. All wheel drive on this airplane. We made sure we bought the premium package. It's got the limited slip diff, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. Get our landing lights on, get our strobes on as well, and we are good to go, everybody. Lovely. Enjoy the departure on a Raleigh heading for Pittsburgh. Power levers coming up 40%. And into takeoff power. Positive rate, you're up. A little bit of a fast departure on that one, that's okay. I don't see a problem with it. Alright. So our left hand turn here. power. What the heck is going on with our throttle lever there? <laughs> One of our throttle levers didn't go into climb. Weird. If tower doesn't tell you puff smoke came out the back of the airplane, <laughs> when take off, you're good. <laughs> yeah. Alright, lovely. Let's get, uh, get the 250 knots now. Flaps coming up. And slats coming up. All right. Lovely. Yeah, Barry, I'm enjoying the hell out of this airplane. I knew I would. I knew I would. two butters with it today. First one, we did the river approach going into Washington. And then our landing in Raleigh was minus 95. I'm always happy with that. Okay, we 
stick inside the cockpit here until it's time for us to go into our climb speed, which is going to be 290. 290 knots on the climb speed. Here comes 10,000. Let's get our landing lights off. And let's get our speed up to 290. Seems like it's really similar to the BAE to accept with a glass cock. Might have to give it a try one day. Yeah, it's very. It's. But yeah, I mean, it, you just got to get used to it. I mean, it, it's not like, you know, I think we all get spoiled by Airbus and Boeing with having the perfect um, VNAV descent. With this airplane right here, you really have to watch your speed because she can get away from you very quickly. If you aren't paying attention for a few moments um, on descent, especially getting towards final, uh, you, the airplane can get away from you in, in multiple ways. It can you can really go get too slow, and you can get too fast very quickly. And that's really the main thing I've learned. Manual, this can come off. And that's really the one thing I've learned when it comes to flying this airplane. It's just you really have to pay attention. If you don't, you're setting yourself up for failure, pretty much. <laughs> But other than that, I, I love it. And I'm enjoying the hell out of it, to be honest with you. And I knew I would. That's why, you know, when I was saying, teasing this airplane a couple weeks ago, saying that we're going to be having a new airplane coming to the stream soon, you know, everybody was like, oh, it's either going to be this or the BAE. And I knew it was this, I already bought it already, so, <laughs> you know, we, I knew I already had it, obviously. Um, but, you know, for me, it was, this is just how, I don't know, I just, I kind of felt like the CRJ was calling my name more than the BAE was. Yeah, the BAE is exactly the same, no auto throttle, VNAV, it doesn't have auto spoilers or reversers either. Yeah, neither does. So, this, and I'm not sure if it's just something I'm not doing right well, you have to arm the reversers, too, so before landing. And then this right here, spoilers auto, um, they don't auto-deploy. So I'm not sure if it's something I'm doing wrong, or at least I don't think they're not auto-deploying. I mean, weird. But, uh, yeah, you gotta make sure you come down here and arm these reverse thrusters before landing. Because if you don't do that, then, uh, yeah, you're gonna be in some trouble. <laughs> <laughs> auto brakes? Yep, nope, but none of that in here either, man. No auto brakes here. At least I don't think. Yeah, no, there's no auto brakes in this. Nope. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Who is that? Stephen King? I've never played around with this before. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. Whew. got to be one of the developers. Got to be. All right. Let's get our tunes going here.
That's the CEO of Aerosoft. Ooh, okay. I was just not expecting a man's face. That's all. <laughs> Still making me laugh. I was not expecting that. Gotta tap out here. Have a good rest of the flight. Talk to you later. See you soon. All right, Dad. Thank you for tuning in as long as you did. Love you. So if you look at the Vatsim map over Halifax, holy crap, I've never seen so many planes in one giant group. Yeah, uh, Burner was just saying the same thing. He said there's a lot of airplanes crossing the Atlantic. Yeah, holy hell. I'm looking right now. Holy cow. That's nuts. Right, 298 nautical miles to go until Pittsburgh, about 33 minutes, everybody. Of course, we are still climbing up to 35,000 feet. Can you imagine the nightmare this is for the three controllers who cover that whole area? And I think that's probably something they sign up for. They probably really enjoy the stress of that. I need to keep practicing with VATSIM some more. I'm going to have some free time here coming up. Um, I start a new job on November 7th. And uh, my notice with my current job is going to give me a couple days off just to have a little mini vacation. And uh, I plan on doing some practicing in VATSIM for sure. I've only been on the network twice. Belsku, hello, he says, I'm back. Climbing flight level 320 from Helsinki towards Copenhagen. Seems like the stream has been going well, yep. Nothing too crazy today, nothing too bad. We had a very nice river visual approach into Washington, uh, followed by a very nice arrival into Raleigh, and now we are on our way to Pittsburgh for the final leg of the day. And we are hoping, saying our prayers, eating our vegetables like Hulk Hogan, and taking plenty of steroids to make sure that we... <laughs> to make sure that we arrive into Pittsburgh with no problems. Jack, hello, welcome back, my friend. It's been a while. Where the hell you been, you slippery devil? <laughs> Check your Volanta. Let's see. A 
But let me tell you something, brother. These mighty pythons, dude. On the CRJ-900, dude, going across the pond on these mighty ape hangers. Hanging on to the lightning bolts, brother. That's about every Hulk Hogan promo he ever cut. <laughs> on vacation? Nice, Jack. Nice. Hope it was well, man. And then you gotta get the Macho Man ready, Savage, in this one. You know, he never liked to mess around. The Macho Man will come down here all day. Miss Elizabeth, all the cream of the crop. <laughs> you put a couple of photos of your spotting on Discord, all right, man. I'll check it out. I just checked you out on Volanta No School. Nice. In the A320 IC. Thin Air Classic. I believe that is one of your favorites. do Burbank to Las Vegas. The John Wayne. Possibly. We haven't been out over in California in a while. So possibly in the future. There we go. Now we're getting some good looking scenery. Starting a big right hand turn here shortly. Just about to level off here as well. So we gotta go in the flight deck because this is where we really need to start managing our speed and taking ourselves out of climb power. 
down into regular managed mode. So let's start bringing the power back so we can be right where we need to be cruising at. Do a circuit pattern and Jackson with my X52 setup. Nice. Enjoy, my friend. I never had the X52. I've only ever had the Hotas. Can I fly the 737-400 next? I don't have access to a 737-400, my friend. Unfortunately. No access to that just yet. Only have access to what's available in Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment. Boston's got three ground controllers on right now. Oh, I could imagine. The only thing that I find annoying that the CRJ does is it does this. If you have to make a really steep turn, it just... To get back on track and course, it just keeps going left, right, left, right, and it'll do that for several minutes until it finally figures itself out. Multiplayer tomorrow? Yes, sir. For our Alaska hopping. You should log in and watch, I bet it's hysterical, yeah. Just sit on the ground, and you don't, you don't even have to. Yeah, just just sign on to V Pilot and listen. <laughs> what do you mean finally, Foot? You've done it a few times already. Finally. <laughs> Maybe shoot a missile. All right. Remember guys, hit that like button for me if you haven't done so already. I would really, really greatly appreciate that. And if you're new here and you're enjoying the stream, please consider becoming a subscriber and turning on notifications for the stream. Would really, really greatly appreciate that as well. We still haven't landed? No, we did. You just missed it, my friend. That's all. <laughs> We landed in Raleigh, and then took back off again. What plane should you use? Our cruising speed in the EMV 110 will probably be around 200 knots or so. About 205 knots, so something that'll be able to keep up with us at that point. So that's going to be a, a King Air, maybe a Bonanza. I don't think you're going to be able to do that in the on the on uh, with the Grand Caravan. Grand Caravan, I don't think you'll be cruising that fast. Try landing in the clouds.
you could put the vertical speed up. Yeah, I mean, you could do that. Like I said, a, a Grand Caravan, a Grand Caravan, Grand Caravan, something like that. You gotta remember, we are a hopping in Iceland, so you're gonna need an airplane. Uh, you're gonna need an airplane that can uh, handle short field takeoff and landings in Iceland, and that can handle those adverse conditions out there. So, like I said, I think a Grand Caravan or something along those lines is what's probably what's going to suit you best. Um, Grand Caravan, even though you won't be able to get as fast as us. Um, or a King Air. Or maybe even the um, TBM. You just have to fly it a little bit slower. Because the TBM will definitely be able to fly a lot faster than us. Use a private jet nice. Check Discord. You gotta remember guys, I don't like to use the internet too much when I'm flying the sim. I don't want to cause it to crash or anything like that. Nice. Looks like you saw a Scandinavian CRJ900. Very cool man, very cool. Yeah, we don't really, uh, we don't really got a lot of variety of airplanes. We don't really have a big variety of airplanes like that around my neck of the woods. Mainly 7.3Ds, A320s, CRJs. The top of descent is in about 80 miles. Yeah, that 787 look nice for sure. I'm say we don't get big airplanes like that over here, man. In real life, Bonanza was about to land and ATC accidentally said banana. <laughs> banana! Banana 5, 2, 3. Plane landing every two to four, uh, every five minutes. Nice, man. Or two to four planes landing every five minutes. Cool, cool. Thousand subscriber special. Yeah, no. I saw that in Discord foot. I already gave you your reply. <laughs> Not sure what the 750 is going to be yet. Someone's requesting Frankfurt to JFK. I kind of think when we were going to try something else, though. Not sure. Amsterdam to St. Martin, dude, <laughs> seven hours, guys, this is seven hours tops. Because as far as I'm concerned, Amsterdam to St. Martin is longer than I would like to go for. If I'm being completely honest with you. Because I believe... Amsterdam to St. Martin is quite a long time. 
but uh, yeah, we'll be picking a long haul that'll probably be about six and a half, seven hours. Well, I mean, Amsterdam to... to you see, the problem with that flight is, is, is you need the good weather. You know, if you're gonna have that headwind pushing on you the whole time, if, if you happen to, that flight's looking at nine and a half, ten hours. If you get the tailwind, you can, you can cut it down to eight. Eight or so, eight and a half, give or take. But, uh, you know, the thing about that is, you know, you gotta take it into account starting up the airplane, programming the FMC and all that. That takes about a half hour. And, you know, if, if we do end up getting that headwind, we're gonna be streaming over 10 hours, man. That's a, that's a long day, guys. You'll donate a thousand if I do Singapore to New York in a 208? Nah. What should I use to escort you? I don't know, man. You choose whatever you like. Should you use CJ4? Should I use a private jet? CJ4 is the private jet, my friend. Little business jet. All right, we are approaching top of descent rather quickly here, everybody. About, <clears throat> excuse me, about 40 nautical miles away. So let's reference our chart here and see where we exactly need it to be for the beginning of our descent. By Nesto, we are expecting 10,000. Seven four seven or eight three eighty. Good luck getting those airplanes in and out of where we're going. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the camera off for just a second, guys. All right, two seconds. I bet the BAE would be fine. Alright, I'm gonna leave the camera off for the rest of the stream, guys. 
Sorry about that. Camera off for the rest of the stream. All right, top of descent is coming up. Get our altitude down. I'll aim for that 10,000 initially. There we go. Top of descent is in about 20 miles or so. Remember, everybody, if you haven't done so already, please hit that like button for me. Would greatly, greatly appreciate that. We're currently sitting at 18. Let's try to get to 20 by the time the stream is over. We are nearly there. D coming up. All right, let's get our vertical speed mode armed already. Keep a lookout for our little star in our suggested vertical speed angle. Once we reach TOD, once we reach TOD, we'll be lowering the power. All right, all right, there it is. Start bringing the power back. And now let's get our vertical speed down. It looks like about 2,100 feet per minute or so, maybe a little bit more, probably more closer to like 2,500 now. And down we go. Descent has started.
Still doing well on the descent rate. About 81 nautical miles to go. Still doing well on our descent. Our descent rate is about 290 knots for our descent speed, which we are right at. We can lower our descent rate just a little bit. Okay. What do you guys think the landing rate's gonna be on this one? I think it's gonna be a butar. A little butter. Oops, going a little bit fast. See? It's the thing about this airplane, man. <laughs> it gets away from you quickly. You looked away for, what, a minute and a half or so? Last song, everybody, too. Perfect, because we're just about to pass through 18,000 feet, and the song just ended. Beautiful. Take ourselves out of standard mode here. Chilling here and cruising, nice.
All right. Now that we are starting to get a little bit closer, let's go to our radio page here. We got to get our ILS frequency dialed in, which is 111.3. There we go. Awesome. Forty five nautical miles to go. Okay. Just about to get to 10,000 feet here. Never thought you'd be touching the vertical speed scroll wheel so much in my entire life. <laughs> But uh, after this, ooh, excuse me, I just sneeze. Apologies, everybody. We're gonna go down to four thousand feet after this. We are about to go below 10,000 feet, so let's get our power levers to idle. Let's slow our rate of descent a little bit to help us bring our speed under control. Landing lights coming on also. Okay, going below 10,000 feet. Awesome, speed is looking good. Keep that down to 250 as a reference point. There's 250, bring the power levers back up a little bit. And let's get a descent rate of 1,500 feet per minute from here on out. Get the simulator volume bumped back up a little bit again. No. down to 2,500 feet after this and our runway will be right there in sight so let's just get this ready already down to 2,500 feet per 
minute. And we will begin slowing the airplane down for our arrival. We'll plan to sit right at about 210 for the time being. It's going to approach mode on now. Run away in sight. Lovely. Flats out. Performance, B ref, get that set, 141. It flaps to eight. Reversers armed. Recording. Started. Flaps twenty. Taking manual control. You're coming down.
right. You guys know what we do here we are not going to taxi to the terminal we are just going to chill out right here start the replay and swag song us out great landing thank you plane can't count i know right all right let's set our parking brake and get our first landing view ready to go which will be this one here God, we're not we're not in the replay <laughs> what is going on there we go okay the replay wasn't playing <laughs> I thought the replay was playing but it wasn't we were under manual control that's why when I was like sync rate what are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Say we didn't get that sync rate alarm when we were landing. <laughs> RIP, I know. <laughs> Crashed right into that hillside. going to be the last replay view everybody here thank you so much for joining me today really greatly really appreciate every single one of you remember Don't tomorrow's sing. stream starts 9 a.m eastern everybody Don't 9 a.m eastern we will be hopping around iceland Don't thank sing. you so much to everybody who joined me today i really greatly really appreciate every Don't single sing. one of you and i look forward to hearing from you all tomorrow take care everybody i'll talk to you all tomorrow have a great rest of your afternoon bye bye for now Thank you.